Okay, guys, so uh, welcome everyone. This webinar is, has been created within the framework of the weekly fasting group, which is a very big international online group uh, of people. And the common denominator of this group is just uh, abstain abstinence from food for at least 24 hours every week. We have a certain time between Friday and Saturday. We abstain from food. People do it at different levels. Some people do it just liquid. Some people do it dry. dry. And also for very different reasons. Some people do it for more health reasons. Other people do it for kind of disciplinary reasons or spiritual reasons. It's really open. This, this group is open-minded. It doesn't have an agenda. We have uh, vegans, we have meat eaters, we have go-foodists, we have keto, we have everything. And uh, you know, my intention as the founder of this group is to create the safe space where people of different modalities are united by this common denominator of fasting and then they, they can just safely share their experience with their, with, within their own experience and their own framework without being judged. So uh, um, if uh, those ideas appeal to you and you're watching this video later on, you're welcome to send me a WhatsApp message. This group operates on WhatsApp and you will find my WhatsApp number um, below the video. My name is Arik and I will happily add you to the group. Now, okay guys, so now I'm really, really happy to have uh, again, Joe Holman with us. Hi, Joe. How's it going? Very good, very good. Thank you very much for coming, for participating. And uh, we're going to talk about many different aspects of one meal a day, and maybe we'll also delve into other subjects that are related to life in general. But we will start, guys, with a short guided meditation by Joe, just to get us a little bit grounded, a little bit, little bit more present, which is always very, very important. So, Joe, over to you. Thank you, Arik. Uh, as always, it's a pleasure to be uh, part of the, the action here, actually, the non-action here, because it's what we're about is uh, getting in touch with the world without getting in touch with the world and coming back to the world of the mind. And that's why we're going to start this morning with a meditation I say this morning, it's, it's, it's 11.42 here, wherever you are in the world, it may be some other time and it doesn't matter. Uh, such is the beauty of the online medium. Uh, let's keep in mind that uh, people meditate for different reasons and with different goals. However, what I'm going to rely on is uh, the original Theravada tradition. And the purpose of this is simply to uh, acquire the silent wisdom that is obtained by following the in and the out. So uh, the, and we don't need to be focused on anything. We don't need to count. All we need to do is be silent and we need to listen to the breath. Now, why do we listen to the breath? We listen to the breath because it conveys wisdom, the wisdom of the, the dualistic nature of life. It conveys the wisdom of the in and the out, the, uh, the one and the zero, if you will. Uh, but you don't need to be, a, be philosophical about it. You only need to understand that the, the wisdom that we're seeking is the wisdom of the rising and the falling. A lot of people do this by counting the breath. They do this by imagining the abdomen rise with the breath and falling, or they say the words in their minds in and out. Uh, with meditation, as always, you don't even need to do any formal meditation. You can do this through your thoughts throughout the day, but we are going to do about Let's say, let's say uh, I'm talking a lot here. Let's say about three minutes starting now. And we're just going to get in a comfortable position where we're not distracted. And uh, most people close their eyes when they do it. And they listen to the in and the out. So let us begin.
All right, let's begin to bring ourselves back into this world, back into this frame of uh, reality. And let us remember that any time we do meditation, I realize many of you do already, maybe all of you do, uh, the idea is to avoid all of the things that you get inundated with on a daily basis, all of the formalities, all of the, uh, the pullings, the cravings, the uh, distractions that come at you on a daily basis. And all you are really doing at, in the final analysis with meditation is you are becoming aware by being silent of all of the things that are really there that you missed when you are in the world. Said another way, when you are in the world, it is very difficult, difficult not to be of the world. It is so very easily easy to be led away and distracted with various preoccupations. And of course, it is Lao Tzu who said uh, a very popular quote, the universe reveals its secrets to the still mind. So when you are meditating, your mind is still. And what you are doing, even if it isn't still, you are bringing it back to a place where you cannot label, where you can observe what is based on no labeling or preconceptions, or you're not bringing any of your passions with it. You're purposely putting that away so that you can see things in a way that you have not before. Now, bear in mind, you're not doing that to get secrets of the universe. You're doing it to be able to see clearly, because if you're in a, a part of this group, I can tell you now, you desire to see the world as it really is. Otherwise, you have a lot of um, a lot of different distractions, a lot of different addictions that will take you and bring you in the way that they want to bring you. So that is very easy to uh, to do. But uh, perhaps we can do one a more full length version at some point on uh, mm -hmm. the topic of meditation. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Joe, so we'll delve to, into our subject, which is like spiritual side of OMAD, of, of fasting. But uh, before that, just for the people who are watching you for the first time, just could you please uh, present yourself just briefly and tell about your experience with OMAD, what brought you into this realm and what kind of results you got throughout the years, everything, everything you want to share. Definitely. For those of you who are new, I, uh, in 2013, I lost, I went on a one meal a day crusade, which lasted me a year, actually just over a year. And uh, I lost 173 pounds in uh, 11 months. And uh, I went from a size 54 waist to a 34. I'm six foot four in height uh, and uh, size 5X to large or XL. Uh, I'm quite tall, so it makes it a little bit easier to have length in my sleeves. And you can see here, I'm coming up a little short. Uh, but uh, I came to be known when I shared that online, my channel, One Meal a Day Revolution, uh, became quite popular. And um, that ended up changing my life in other ways. So instead of just becoming about weight and results, it also unlocked a lot of uh, previously closed door for me. Doors, uh, fasting did. Spirituality, awareness of... Uh, you know, the Tao, truth, and so forth and so on. So I do consider myself a student of, well, no labels. I don't, I don't have a label for myself today, but that's, uh, that I believe is uh, the strength, I think, if we really understand things clearly. But one meal a day has been and is still my secret. It is something that I do on most days of the week, save about two days a month, I will eat once a day, strict once a day. And uh, I do eat a very plant-based diet. I eat meat or flesh about once a week. Uh, and uh, give or take, I have been able to optimize that for strength training, for running, for all of the things that, uh, that I need to do. And so that gives you a, a crude summation of, what, uh, of why I'm talking to you today. Amazing. Yeah. And I just want to add that you probably helped lots of people throughout your channel, throughout counseling. Yeah. So uh, how, how did this part go? Uh, I, at first I didn't want to do anything with that. I, I had people say, listen, I will pay you money to just talk to you. And I was like, why does anyone want to pay to have any, hear anything I have to say? Uh, and I had, um, uh, I, uh, just had a PayPal account. I said, okay, well you can PayPal me money and I'll take time out and answer your questions. And so reluctantly I did, I did not want to, I ended up with, uh, quite a bit of, uh, people reaching out to me, especially in the early years when the channel really took off and I, uh, I do to this day, I do, I do consults with people. I have a, a bit more of an advanced plan for those who want to know more about themselves. I put my professional HR side to work and I do have a, a, a consulting graph for people who want to know about their behavior and so forth. So, uh, but it did not start that way, but yeah, I've coached over about, I think it's over a thousand people now. So we're, we're, we're talking about a, uh, more than I ever expected. 
But of course, that is the nature of life. It gives us always more than we than we expect. So. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. So, uh, okay, Joe, so let's start delving into this subject of spiritual side of fasting of OMAD. So when you proposed this particular title for this meeting, what were your thoughts? What were your what would you like to talk about in relation so, to that? Mm -hmm. So here's what I, I want, and this is what a lot of people, when they find one meal a day online, let's say, their minds are adjusted toward uh, a, a nice way to eat to make their life easier. But what is not immediately obvious is the way that it changed you. So said another way, uh, you can eat OMAD, but OMAD is also eating you because it's going to change your perspective. It's going to change. It's going to allow your sense of minimalism your sense of life optimization, your sense of priorities to also change. Of course, it doesn't happen fast. It happens over a period of time. And what I have found and what I kind of wanted to unpack today is what another thing people are not ready for is when they come to OMAD and they succeed, they find something out about themselves. And that thing is they were looking for something deeper. Uh, if they fail on OMAD and they don't succeed, they find that they were not looking for that. So take this in the context of dating. You, you date somebody and you find them attractive at first and you, whether it's a singles bar or a dating app, you, you got together and you had a little fun, but then you had a relationship and you noticed there were problems. And those problems started out small and they became big until eventually maybe you sent a text message or maybe you made a phone call and you said, it's not me, it's you or it's not you, it's me. Mm. A lot of younger guys have heard this and, oh, it's not you, it's me. Oh, okay, you mean I'm not good enough? You mean, no, it's not that, I'm just, I don't want this. And you find yourself having to break the news to someone that it's not gonna work out. It's like that with OMAD very often because some of the people, and I've seen this over and over in con consultations with people, is that a lot of people came looking for a weight loss hack because they had an idea preset in their mind that would make their life easy. Um, but OMAD isn't easy. It's the opposite. It's hard, but it's only hard in the sense if you're not prepared for it. It would be like getting invited to a, a doctor. Let's say you're an epidemiologist and you get invited to go and speak. And then you realize when you get there, I, I don't know anything about this subject. <laughs> well, that's going to be hard because you went to an epidemiologist um, event. So and the epidemiologist speaker coordinator would say, well, are, aren't you an epidemiologist? And you say, no, I'm really not. I'm just a guy. I read an article one time and I thought it was cool. Well, that's a way big difference than, than someone who's an epidemiologist who's gone through 13 or so years of school and, and you know, been well qualified to look at the body. And of, of, of course, um, or any field of discipline, I just threw that out as an example. Uh, but it's the same way when people come to lose weight. And what I have found is when people come to lose weight, they're looking for with the same mentality that someone is for a quick cash opportunity. Every one of us here at some point in our lives has gone on the internet and put quick ways to make cash today, quick ways to make $100 tomorrow or ne by next week or something. That mindset that is coloring your eyes when you go to do something like that is the wrong mindset. If you have any level of wisdom, you realize that you already know if you have something you want to sell. If I wanted to, I could sell this microphone I'm using right here that's plugged into the computer and I could get 50 bucks for it at least, even used. Um, but uh, I already knew that, right? The same thing with making money. You already know that the things that you can achieve are worth a certain amount. If you're qualified for a $20 an hour job today, I'm using American dollars here, but you, could, you can put anything, any currency, you already know you can get another job like that. You can go today and get another job, whether it's security or customer service or whatever. If you're a lawyer, you know you can become a lawyer again somewhere else. Doctor, you can become a doctor again. It's the same thing with your core, your core estimation of yourself. So if you're on the market looking for an easy way to lose weight, then you're not going to find it because you're looking for something that is not real, much the same way that all of these, I call them losers, they're losers, I shouldn't be ugly about it, but they're, they're losers who run these quick, get rich quick websites, because they know that mindset. They know that somebody will gamble, and the same type of people that gamble love get rich quick, because they have an idea of what is attainable in terms of um, this, this idea of, oh, I, I feel really good right now. I feel like I'm, I'm going to get paid 50 bucks, 100 bucks, it's adding up. 
It's that same lottery, uh, sell the sizzle, not the steak feeling. I used to sell cars and uh, I, I, that we would always say, sell the sizzle, not the steak. You show off the car, the red paint, the nice, you know, the new car smell, the cold AC, you let them feel it hit their skin that, oh, it's cold, it's a new car. So they won't think about the payment that they're going to have to be making. It's going to mm. stay with them for seven long years. Mm. That's the same thing. Now bring that back to a dieter who's 400 pounds, has type two diabetes, is in the worst shape of their lives. And they're in that shape because they created them. They created that version of themselves. And now they're allowing those same colored glasses to view the world to create yet more dirty karma. Remember, karma just means action. For those of you who may not have an understanding, karma just means your action, but it carries the idea of, of identity and momentum. So you are what you do. You are your actions. That's why people that go around looking for easy stuff and free stuff never get, never get satisfied because you are your sum value. So they go and they say, well, this is hard. I have to not eat anymore. Hold on a minute. If you're looking for easy, I've got some swampland in Florida. I can sell you for, you know, there's a saying here in the U.S. I got some swampland for, for you in Florida because people in the 80s would do a lot of scams and they would sell giant acres of land that were, un, you couldn't, it's swamp. It's, uh, you know, but uh, without belaboring the point, you understand what I'm saying that mindset is what destroys things. When you get someone on the other hand, who finds a man, who finds me usually online, looks up and, and uh, notices, uh, this is going to require a lot of sacrifice, but it doesn't occur to them because they've got good glasses on and they're seeing it from the correct karma. They're seeing it from the correct outlook. They're mm -hmm. understanding the fact that it's going to involve them making sacrifices. That means when your friends come over and they want to take you out for beer, you can't go out for beer. You can go out, but you, you can't have a beer. You've, you're not eating after a certain time. And they learn all that's involved. And instead of tearing them apart inside, it, they start saying, am I willing to count the cost? Of course, in Luke 14, you have Jesus who says, uh, if you're going to come and follow me, you need to count the cost. Because uh, what, man, um, what manner of man is um, among you who builds a building and doesn't first count the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish building it? <laughs> Look at how when you, you wouldn't start laying a foundation of a house and oh, I can't put the walls up. I, I, I ran out of money. Moron, why did you why didn't you why did you start building before you knew what was involved? Same thing. Same thing. So you get somebody on the one hand who succeeds and someone on the other who does not. What's the problem? The problem is them. It's always been them. I had a guy stop me at, at work. You know, everybody knows I'm the take care champion. I teach physical fitness, I teach the running, I teach the terminal walks. We do terminal walks for our people in my corporate job. And um, they come up to me and say, hey, what's the easy way to do this? Wrong question, my friend. The easy, if you're looking for easy, I don't deal in easy. I, I, my, my entry level is going to be a much higher dollar than that. Just an analogy. But mm -hmm. um, I say it's going to require a lot more of you. I'm, if we get into easy, you know, now you're back to weight loss pills and exercise mats and the junk people sell online that is nothing. That it's not going to help you at all. So you've tried that for most of us, if they're honest, they've tried that for years. Anybody been overweight and you've tried all the same stuff? You've tried the, this will keep you from storing fat. You know, this will keep your heart up and you'll, and they end up taking a whole bunch of supplements with Ma Wong, Chinese stimulant, and they get jittery and they say, I'm burning fat. <laughs> you're burning your time. You're burning your effort. You're burning your energy and you're storing up even more fat in the form of very bad karma because you're going to generate more and more of that. You're going to, there's always going to be someone like that. Paul in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter four says, he describes those driven with the wind and tossed. They're like a sh ship on the sea and they're on the next diet craze that'll come along. They'll go after. I deal with those people all the time. When I consult them, I tell them, listen, you're willing to invest your money, which is a good sign, but I just, I'm going to tell you, you're going to have our time. Here's why. Uh, because you're, and I can't, we keep getting back to the same thing. The longer we talk, they come back to this idea where they're looking for a hack and then suddenly they realize, okay, this is not uh, what I expected. Well, it's not what you expected because you don't know yourself. And that's the problem with our, our uh, dating analogy we made and our, uh, uh, you know, same thing. If you don't know yourself, then you cannot succeed. So basically the only way fasting, it doesn't work is with low self-knowledge. When you adjust to fasting, you're understanding that the meal's already here. Just like the meal of your, your self-esteem, the meal of your, 
uh, your self-worth, all of that has to be intact first. Because if you don't love yourself, it's hard to love somebody else. It's hard to have a relationship with anybody else. And that's why the people that do the drugs who are the most addicted, whether it's gambling or heroin, doesn't matter, or food, it's the same addiction. Apply it in a different way. And when you're fixing, you're not, uh, you, you're in the, 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 the unwholesome mindset. So anytime you're sitting there fasting, if your mind is not saying, I'm complete right now, I'm burning what is on me. I'm burning the fat that is on my body. I am my meal. You've attained, if you are not that, then you're in trouble because you're going to run out of motivation. Run, motivation already runs out. Mm. How much, uh, you have to go watch a bunch of my videos. I get people every week tell me, oh, I'm watching more of your videos for motivation. And my reply, although I don't always say it, is um, we, uh, you, you should be generating your own motivation. Uh, one of the, the creator comp components of all of the, the variations of God in history and in mythology and in nature is that gods create from nothing. That's what makes them creative. Everything else is a knockoff. You create one good movie and you have a whole bunch of knockoffs. The knockoffs suck. They're worthless. They're, nobody wants them. They go in the bargain bin at Target or Walmart or Kmart or something. Nobody wants them. But the, when you get the original idea, it becomes a classic because nobody thought of that before. It's the same thing with your, when you are movement, when you are moving basically at the hand of the divine, you are doing something that is in the nature of creative power. So you're generating your own motivation. When I found OMAD, that was the situation. I knew it was going to work. I knew that I would make it work. And that I knew, I knew that all things ultimately, even though I didn't have the specific knowledge that I have now looking back, I knew that it had to be. How does a person get to that point? Well, the answer is you can't accept understand the difference. And when you understand the difference, you'll have the tools to unlock that ability. I deal with this all the time. How do I get motivation? How do I get more self-control? Self-control is just a reflection of the divine energy. And how do you have it? By understanding that you don't have it. <laughs> you understand where you are right now and you understand that. And as a result of that, you develop it. It's like uh, getting mad and... Um, you know, you're, you're furious at something and then somebody lets you in on a secret. It's all a joke. You're not mad anymore suddenly. Mm. <laughs> Someone says, hey, we're just, we're just, we're supposed to act mad. We're just setting this guy up over here. Uh, you know, so somebody comes along and brings you in on the secret. You're like, oh, I got it now. I got it now. So suddenly you went from being breakneck mad, dang it, to now I'm, I'm not mad anymore. You do that by knowledge. The same thing with creative power. So I can teach OMAD. But I can't necessarily teach you or someone else, Omad, if they don't have the spiritual template already laid down for that. So that is sometimes what I find that I have the most trouble. I have about four or five different clients that come back to me regularly and they, they say, okay, remind me again what I need. And they, I keep telling them, but they're analytical by nature. So their minds break things down into checklists. So they keep saying, okay, I did that. Why am I still suffering? Okay, I did that. And I, I can't get them to look back and see the forest for the trees mm. because their, their minds are techno, techno people. And they have the hardest mm. time losing weight. They have the hardest time understanding this sort of stuff. Mm. They tend to be the first people who um, are very fatalistic and feudalistic in their thinking because they're, they're constantly reasoning out of insecurity and out of... Um, out of weakness because they feel like they're never good enough and they can't draw on that sense of spirituality. So, you know, Jesus said, no man can come unto me except the father, which has sent me draw him and I will raise him up in the last day. Uh, someone come to Jesus and one of the mothers upset, came up and said, can you grant my sons to sit on your right hand and on your left? And he said, he said, that's not mine to give. It will be given to whom it was prepared. And if you go and you read all the many passages, which I don't have time to divulge, in the Old and New Testaments that teach predestination, if you read it from the wrong angle, it looks horrible. It looks uh, awful. It looks like some were meant to succeed and some were meant to fail no matter what they do. Well, that's true, but it's not true for the reasons people understand it. It's true because there have to be some who don't get it the same way there have to be some who do get it. There have to be some who are lawbreakers and there's some it have to be some who are law keepers. In the majority of cases, most people are basically decent. Same thing with what we were talking about before we started recording, which we probably should have recorded. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, that's the nature of the elect versus the non-elect. And that's what 
all of the divine in every religion, every faith, it doesn't matter the faith, you can put whatever title on it you want. The real magic is to understand that when the, the divine speaks inevitably, uh, a stopped clock is right twice a day. That's always the way it is. Because when you understand that you, you get eventually to where you're inevitably going to learn, you're in, you have to learn. Now you understand the nature of how the divine even communicates. Mm -hmm. So I've spent quite a bit on this point. But yeah, when you Joe, so I, I just have a question, you know, um, according to what you said. Uh, so on the practical level, if a person wants, like has this urge to do OMAD, but um, they're not uh, like they kind of dabbled into in meditation and other spiritual ideas, but, uh, but on the practical level, what, what would they have to do in order to prepare themselves, to prepare their mindset, just not in theory, but in practice in their life? What should they do? They should uh, practice doing OMAD. They should practice going as long as they can. And if we want to get away from the spiritual perspective and go back to the physical, we can. We can say, okay, um, start, uh, do you have your plates? Start practicing eating and only one plate and start that day. See how long you can go. They say, well, I only made it 13 hours and I was too hungry. Okay, uh, try to keep going. Can you, you know, and I never, I never deal with this because usually the people that say that tend not to be the ones that you can help. You know, a 23 hour fast isn't that long, uh, but I tell people, if you want to do that, uh, then you can try and cut it down to two meals. And uh, we talked, and I have some videos on my channel about eating two meals, one larger, one smaller. You mm -hmm. always want to eat a larger one earlier and then a very small one later if you, you know, not after about four or 5 p.m. So you have 10 or 11 a.m. and then you have four or 5 p.m. and then get you started and then go get away from all cheating after that if you're going to do that and then say because then that's the one thing that anybody can do you can definitely say i'm, I'm going to get rid of uh junk sugars if you know if you need a fasting beverage you have coffee you have tea you have water you have you know artificial sweeteners if you have to have them uh those aren't going to hurt your fast so there's definitely something someone can do uh to get started the question is are they willing to take the plunge? And most people who are not willing to take the plunge aren't that serious. So you see, yeah. you, you can kind of see how that puts the, that person has to, again, look at themselves and, and listen to what we've talked about here yes. and see about why they are where they are. Well, you are where you are because of the same desire to have it easier is the same desire to not succeed. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. The same thing with what we talked about with the guy who comes up and says, what's the easiest way? Well, the easiest way is to just do it and stop looking for an easiest way. So, um, yeah, yeah, but I mean, uh, for example, a, a person wants to do that, but then you said that they have to create the um, uh, inspiration or the motivation themselves. Now, what to do? Uh, like, for example, people who had prior to that had been kind of practicing uh, some kind of mind control or observation or some kind of inner work, they can connect to those ideas, but people who who hadn't do that, uh, they don't have this experience now, what should they do? Should they watch YouTube videos to inspire yes. them or what should they do? Learn and try. It's the same thing with uh, making me, and I did this uh, after I'd started OMAD, I tried different things and I found that uh, at first eating a, a fully uh, plant uh, fruit meal was unsatisfying. Most people that, that begin to experiment with raw foods will find the same challenge. They'll say, well, I, I just, I don't feel full. I don't feel really right. But you'll find that as the days go by, you feel better. You feel, because you're like instantly in five to 10 minutes, you absorb all those nutrients that you eat, maybe 20 at the most. You, now you've got all that energy. And yes, you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna go throughout the day where you're gonna you start to notice you don't have anything in your stomach, but your body's gonna start relying on what you have stored much quicker. And I tell people that and they don't get it, especially people that are older that don't have as fast a metabolism. I say, if you make a meal out of fruit, you will be completely blown away with how much, how your, your digestion will take off, how your, your body will start to ramp up. And now, of course, we're transitioning a little bit here in our discussion to more physical. Uh -huh. We're getting back down, which is fine. Um, but uh, one of the things to do is to realize that the same way you learn and you watch videos about nutrition and raw foods and health, that's a great way to get inspired. I mean, it just is. It shouldn't be your only way. Uh, but then two, starting to fast. Uh, start with two meals a day. Get rid of all sweets and junks. Get rid of all liquid calories. Don't drink your calories unless it's at the meal. Uh, and then... Uh, 
when you go to the second meal a day, maybe you uh, you just have a, something the equivalent of a slim fast or a shake or a uh, fruit. And then the next day you start to realize that was still challenging, but it wasn't too challenging. Well, the next day, eventually you're going to get to a point where you're ready to take the next plunge and say, I'm going to push through. Mm -hmm. And I realize if you're coming from four big meals a day or five average meals a day, which a lot of people are, they're constantly eating. I understand it's hard to go to a one meal a day because you feel like you're betraying your routine on top of the, the fact that you're struggling so much with your, uh, with your hunger. But remember, the hunger is just like anything in life. It's an illusion. It, it, it's not there. It only exists in relation to the way you've taught your body to act. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to say, well, that's not what we do anymore. The same way you say to your four-year-old, we're moving well, mama, I don't want to move. Well, that's not your call. I mean, it's, you know, you, we're moving, therefore you're moving. And your body will, has, you have the same relationship to all your nerves, all your hormones, all of that stuff that you think is, uh, you know, on its own track and automatic, it still will respond to your stimulus in, in a bigger way than most people give credit for. Okay. Wow. Yeah, amazing. Now, Joe, um, the, the best format for these webinars that I uh, found is that um, like you talk something like 20, 25 minutes, like you have been talking now, and then we kind of open our microphones for questions. Um, sure. And then after that, we proceed with our subject. So guys, if you have any questions, you are welcome to unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. If not, we will just proceed on. I have the ones that are uh, written that we took down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so let's let's let them first uh, uh, ask their question. If hi, I... hi. So, hey, Lori. Hi, hi, guys. How you doing? Um, I'm so sorry that I missed most of the. I, you know, I my phone broke and I had to get it reset and I had to get WhatsApp back, so I didn't get the beginning of the whole talk. But um, but I was wondering, um, Joe. Um, so I, I'm not sure, are you saying, are, what, what are you um, promoting as far as the diet goes? Like when you eat the one meal a day, anything you want or fruit or, or, or what? I, the way I will officially answer that is the, anything you want. However, if you uh, want to know my diet, that's a different question. I'll, I'll be happy to tell you what I eat. So you just let me know. But yeah, the, the food is really secondary to the, the control. And, and that's going to always be first and foremost. Uh, everybody has kind of different things there they gravitate toward. And I have learned that it's very important to understand the difference. So if you'd, I can be happy to tell you what I would recommend versus and what I do versus uh, what some people prefer. Yeah, I would like to hear that as well. I know that uh... I feel like uh, maybe, you know, it's funny. <laughs> I've watched some of your videos a long time ago, and then I was so wanting to come on this t call today. I didn't know who was speaking. And I was like, oh, you, Joe, great, great. <laughs> so, um, but I, you know, I think, yeah, I think I've seen some of your meals. I'm not sure, but maybe you, like you tried the fruit, but it didn't work for you or it did. Okay, go ahead and tell me then. Because, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. I'll, um, I'll no, sure. I Right. No, I'll tell you this. Uh, of course, I, like anybody else, change. So there are adjustments that I have made. Uh, I started off with junk food and eating once a day, moved into meat and potatoes sort of stuff. I've always been a starch person. I've always been a meat person. Um, lately, my what I tend to do is I have an optimal day. I have a suboptimal day. And then I have a splurge day. The splurge day is once a week now. Uh, and every other day is optimal, suboptimal, optimal, suboptimal. So optimal is fruit-based, more than half raw. And it usually ends with the, the raw gets eaten first. Uh, to give you an example, watermelon, grapes. Uh, I get a big bag of frozen strawberries and whatnot. And I'll make a big uh, smoothie because it's just so easy and quick. And then I'll transition into something like buckwheat, buckwheat groats that have seasoning like hamburger seasoning to them. Uh, I might have rice and legumes. On, an, on a suboptimal day, I might have some meat. So I will have mixed veggies with sardines or uh, I will have black eyed peas with turkey sausage. Turkey sausage is one of my most favorite things. Uh, and then a couple of days will go by and I might have just grapes and watermelon or blueberries, or I might have um, orange juice with pineapple and spinach. I'm, I don't use much spinach anymore. I usually use arugula. Uh, I might have, uh, but some, there's been days I've had nothing but orange juice or nothing but grape juice or I've had. So, uh, but again, mm -hmm. I, I consider optimal a fruit base because you absorb them most easily. Uh, a day will come, I'll have eggs and bacon. I'll have something like that. Um, 
as far as I see, I get it. I I saw what you eat. I was wondering when you said before that you don't want to do drink your calories. Are you not saying that now? Can you have juice during the instead fast. of during the fast? Well, during the fast. During the so fast, during the, the daily fast, when I'm done with the meal, I've always yeah. done a 20 ounce calorie caloric beverage at the meal. Usually, if I'm not having water, it's it's a juice of some sort, and that's the thing I drink first because it's absorbed most quickly. So if I do that. That's but you after that you wouldn't drink your calories once you're back into fasting and you've completed the meal you're done for the day in terms of any liquid calories, make sense? Oh God, yes, well, yeah, yeah, I think I, I got that. But I I was saying that um, normally I like to do you know juices for meals a lot of times, but I I just want to say that like yeah I, I remember now some of the videos of you I watched some of you eating what you eat and all that, but uh, and you just stabilize your weight stabilizes it right. Absolutely, like yeah. right. Yeah. I'm, I'm 189 pounds this morning, so it's uh, I've maintained my weight. Uh, I've never gone above about 205 since uh, for for eight years now. So it's I've I definitely I know what it's like, and I, I strength train. I have plenty of energy for working out, even while fasted. Uh, so what might, calories? What what kind? How much calories do you do a day then with your meal? Like how much is it? Like, give and take doing? around 1800. Uh, about 18 oh. to, to 2200 if, if if i'm splurging of course much more than that or if i'm having a non-optimal day i might hit about 2400 calories 25 uh basically the body does not need that many calories well that's, that's a lot to me <laughs> that seems like a lot <laughs> I, I um yeah what i've been doing and it, i thought it was similar but it's not really i guess but um you know i've been you know oh i think i did comment with you and you said that you don't I guess you don't uh, maybe believe it, but I have been, you know, on maybe six to, you know, four to 800 calories a day doing like juice and um, mm -hmm. kind of following the breatharian path. And I, I met many people that have been doing it and went to retreats and, oh, that's right. I, I did comment on it and you said you, you wish it was true. So I want to hear, I'm here to tell you that there's even Nicholas, was on this channel they you know he has a couple of uh, things on this channel where he talks about it and um you know it, it, you can you can you can live on prana or you can live on very little calories i i've met many people and that's what i was uh, that's kind of what i felt my path was you know and it's i'm still on it i'm nowhere near near where i want to be with it but uh i find that also for me when I eat um, cooked foods, it's really hard to salt. Like now I was doing juice for a while and I was healing and doing good. And then as soon as I had soup, this soup, you know, vegetable soup and it had salt in it, I guess, cause you know, it has a little salt or whatever. And my hands, after a week of juicing, my hands totally healed cause they were burning pain at night and numb and you know, all that, a lot of pain. And then in one week, and one soup got then that day that I had the soup, my hands went back to being, you know, really bad again, really bad again. So I find that, you know, I don't know if I might have to go on a very cleansing diet for a long time to be able to eat any salt and, you know, all this stuff. Like, I, I feel like I can't eat it, you know? You are, you are a little bit, I have to say, you're a little bit on the wrong path there. I, I feel, first of all, as far as the breatharian thing goes, They've they've had they've had people. Yeah, there's a very fine line between spirituality and pseudoscience, and I, I I don't. It's not my goal to discourage you, but to encourage you and to to set you right on some. So yes, I mean obviously there's going to be people on this program that we, we won't agree eye to eye on everything. That's okay. It doesn't doesn't make them or anybody else a bad person. I disagree. So, but the problem with that is if we isolate people and we we will find you will find that then they've actually done exposés on this people claim to live on only breath uh, if you can keep them you'll find that the way you burn off oxygen and calories it can't go forever uh the one of the most people ju just want to say sorry but most i just want to tell you most people don't just have nothing they mostly do have something very little but something um there's not too many they say that are just living on air and water or no water or whatever there's not too many but sure. most of them do have eat, you know, like you, like they fast a lot, but they're so they're eating once a week or once a month or once a day or whatever they're doing, you know, whatever uh, level they're on. But they say that it's not just from the guy that was on this show. I, I've been to retreats with many people that are claim to be, you know, living on prana. They don't need a lot. Of, in other words, they don't need all these calories that people say you need. 
they they live on very little yeah, calories. Agree. We agree to, that you, you need very little because most people yeah. aren't aware of how much fat is in their muscles, is in their tissues, is in their their yeah. Your body will go incredibly long on hair, on but it's it's still eating you. So the idea, but the problem, my problem is, is when we represent something like breatharianism, we're dealing with something that's being represented as if it's uh, it, like you, you're pulling chi out of the sky. It, it doesn't quite work that way. Uh, you're always connected with nature. And this is the reason I don't agree with vegans who are pure vegan. And they say, well, you only need this. And I was like, no, it doesn't happen that way because you are connected with nature. Uh, you are connected with everything. So the same way you're, you, you are not a special creation. You are you, you come from mud the same way all things come from mud and you will die in the, in the, the, the summation of the elements of the earth will melt with fervent heat the same way, you know, it's just as in religions, it's, it's true of the stars. It's, so I'm saying it's, it's fine, to, but uh, you don't want to hear what you want to hear on, on these sorts of things. I, I, I got no problem saying I've, I've, I've had 200 calories on certain days. I've had, uh, you know, just a small juice, maybe 450 calories at the most, and I felt amazing. So yes, I, I agree with that. The reason I don't teach that is because I'm trying to get away from the calorie dynamic is because people, <laughs> they lose track of de facto calorie counting and they start trying to micromanage their process. And that's when you get into a letter of the law versus oh, spirit of law. So I would agree, I would not identify, I would not associate in any way with breatharian. I, I mean, again, being around someone who's aware of spiritual principles, I think is great. And they can do that however they want to. I'm not, true lighthouses have no competition. So I'm not competing with anyone. I happen to know that we shouldn't, I don't want to misrepresent facts. And so that's why when we talk about fasting and I, I want to understand that your body is meant to do that. Your body is meant the same way the bear is meant to do that. Even though you can't go as long as the bear, you can still, your, your body is capable of amazing. I think we would both agree there. Your body is capable of many great things. And yeah. the more in touch you are with your spiritual path, the better you are in every area. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. But are you also saying that you don't agree that people could be vegans like they have to eat animal no, products no, they totally the, the, i'm saying that that's generally the the reason people run into problems is because they and this is you know you hear about deficiencies you hear about people that just couldn't manage it because they couldn't manage yeah i think it can work for some people uh but the problem is you don't need to go that far so you can say i'm go if it's again if it's in your my my spiritual outlook does not preclude eating animals so it's it, it would be in my it might you might not agree you might say well i would rather not have to do that at all okay but to me that subjugates that usurps um the animal role and subjugates the human role i believe we all depend on each other and the lower life forms are there because they do not share necessarily the um made in the, the, the component of being made in the image of god you do and there is a certain primacy that you should that you take of the planet that is a responsibility and i don't see all animals as equal to humans and so i think that's kind of what this gets into yeah i'm just trying to see your point of view with that because i'm not perfect and i'm not saying i've been i've been vegan most of my life but you know i do go off only because of food uh, issues that i you know once i want to eat something whatever just because of that not because i need it but I just wondered because, you know, I know, you know, like my cousins, they're religious and they do feel that the animals are worth here for them. I don't know if that's what you're kind of saying, like they're actually here for them to eat. And I, I guess, you know, I'm, I know we're going to have to probably agree to disagree with that because I just feel that they feel so much and they suffer so much for us. And I don't know if that's, you know, I, I feel bad when I eat animals, put it that way. I'm not saying I never did, did or do, but I, I, I mostly I don't. But I just well, also agree. It sounds like we kind of agree because it's I don't I you know like I said once a week I'm good uh, and, I, and I'll do that sometimes it's a practical matter as far as animals being put here for us there's a reason we shape the planet and it's not a it, it, there's again it's, uh, I, it's either you you're going to get in a point where you have to either agree and say well I'm vegan therefore it's ethically wrong to to ever cheat or you're going to say I'm just a plant based eater. And I'm, I think you shouldn't, but ideally, but, and I would agree with you as a plant-based eater, but I, I, but I, how, but how, how do you feel though about what you see in, like, I, I pretty, pretty much my goal is to be vegan and I am right now, but, but what do you feel about when you see that those movies where they're like, 
torturing the animals where they pull away the calf from the baby, even the when you just eat dairy and they're crying and they're oh, and, sure. and they're just and their whole life is just standing there milking because they're artificial inseminating them, like basically raping them to keep having producing more milk, and they just have the worst life. And then that's of one course, side I mean, of the coin. Yeah, that's one side of the coin. So when you look at stuff, of course, that's nobody's gonna agree that that's nobody's gonna not agree that that's terrible. I mean, it's, it's that it's a, but it is also a reality on the other side of that fence is, is animals are protected by humans. So when they uh, observe protection from in farms that are, that are not industrial farms, they do thrive because many species have been protected, just like many fruits have been cultivated by man. Uh, maize and corn being an example, maize has become corn and it's, it's man's kind's control of the planet. So it, the way you're, you're, you're looking at a mass society issue and you're equating it to a fundamental wrong, the, I, I don't think you can make that connection. You washed your hands. You took a shower this morning, I'm assuming. If so, you killed many bacteria. You were their world ender. Um, you probably have mouse traps in your house. If you don't, uh, your building you work for does. There is a certain, what you're not seeing is they don't occupy the same place on the the spiritual domain that you do. And so the things that are the reality for the bugs, gut bugs in your stomach are not the same reality for you. So yes, your, your gut bugs killing and digesting your food and making digestion possible are doing the right thing by fighting each other. And at your expense, I mean, at your benefit, you know, uh, versus, and so I don't think you can make a logical determination. You can't draw a line between the lower animals and more social <coughs> animals. And that's what a lot of vegans do. They show the slaughterhouse video and they say, this is awful. And I say, I agree, but it's only one side of the coin. And they say, well, how can you ever support this? Well, I can fundamentally make the argument. Well, you know, if I leave this light on, that's money that can be given to the poor that I could have donated and I didn't. It becomes a type of, religious zeal and fundamentalism that loses sight of the greater picture. And having been a religious fundamentalist for a large portion of my life, I've learned that you have to step away when you run into those situations, because I'm not trying to change the world. I understand the world is perfect the way it is, including all of the arrangements you see. You can't have good without bad. What you observe is there for a reason. Uh, and, you know, and that doesn't preclude taking action to change things. And uh, so I think that's where you're going to have to you're going to have to run into a stopping point eventually in your your reasoning on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, guys. So let uh, let's um, uh, give uh, the opportunity to that to other people to ask. If not, then we will just continue with this with our subject of spiritual or mad. So, guys, do you have any more questions? Okay, okay, Joe, and I, so um, you you um, you have touched in your. Hey, thank you. Ah. I just wanted to say thank you. No, thank, you Laurie. Thank, you to thank you, so much. Thank, thank you, Laurie, you, Laurie. for the conversation. Yeah. Thank you, um, Joe, and so I wanted to, because uh, um, like um, as a part of your uh, conversation with Laurie, um, she touched this um, subject of detox. Um, there are people who actually claim that. Uh, you don't have actual diseases. It's just a, a pollution of the body. Like the body is polluted, uh, there is a toxicosis or something like that, and then the only way to heal is to detox. Now, what's your take on that? Uh, do you buy this idea, or do you think that um, the truth is uh, somewhere else? What do you think about that? Oh, the, the, there's no question that detox can can be a great thing. The problem is it, the, the body is much more complicated than that. So. Uh, somebody can detox and get rid of cancer completely. Other persons can uh, run into no help at all, or they can realize that uh, what they finally realized that the error was in their genes, something that happened before they were born. So of course, it's not going to work at all. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, all disease begins in the gut. I think that's almost true. Uh, I think here's the problem. And this is one of my points to cover. Uh, and uh, you have to see you can't misunderstand the role of your health problems. Your health problems are there the same way the villain is there in a cartoon. You have Optimus Prime and then you have Megatron. And what does Megatron say in every episode? Next time Optimus Prime, he comes back and then it's a war. Your, you, your, your health problems are a part of you. So when I hear someone say, well, I'm healed, they go to a faith healing seminar or something and they say, I stood up and you're, you're not curing your problem. 
Your problem is part of you the same way, uh, you know, Green Goblin cannot go to Mephisto's dimension unless he's trying to rescue his mother. Uh, it's this, this same sort of relationship, but we don't look at life that way. Instead, we say, I'm on a quest and I'm going to conquer the, the, the yeah, I'm going to conquer the mountain. I'm going to do all this. You're already, the, you are the mountain. The, 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 all of the drama that's going to happen in your life, it's going to happen. And everything you're going to do, and it's going to drive you nuts thinking about this, but that's already a part of you. So somebody who doesn't control their blood sugar as well, somebody with cancer, somebody with uh, like uh, uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, like uh, Hawking. Uh, and I've gone on record saying this. He admitted this all to, before he died. Uh, Stephen Hawking, everybody knows, is the great physicist who changed our world with his knowledge of black holes. He admitted years ago in the 70s, he said, if I had not gotten this disease, I would never have developed my ability with math because I, he just sort of liked math and was really good at it, but he hadn't perfected his, he hadn't, he admitted, he said, I have no idea where I would be, were it not. You have to look at your health problems the same way. Yes, you can control them. You can probably get rid of about 98% of them. Uh, you can get rid of uh, gut problems. You can get rid of GI complications. You can get rid of tumors, most cancers. Uh, are there some that are going to kill you? Yeah, absolutely. And what do you do in those situations? You say, my purpose here is to struggle because by struggling, I am creating an opportunity for someone else who will not struggle. That's a weird frame of mind because not everybody can have that problem. Not everybody can be sick. Many people will be healthy. Many people will not be. So once you have taken all of the efforts that you can take to heal your body. What you say effectively is this is the will of the divine. Remember, um, was it Kid Icarus and the Cyclops? The story of uh, he, uh, he stabbed out the eye of the Cyclops when he slept and the Cyclops rose up and um, Kid Icarus stood by and said, uh, y'all can correct me if I'm getting a, it's been a long time, but I remember in my mythology class learning about the whole dynamic. And he said, uh, Kid Icarus said, pray to the gods that your sight be restored. And he called out and nothing happened. And so he said, well, if this is, if, if it is not the will of God, if it is not the will of uh, God that you, then God is willing that you be blind. So in other words, and if, if man did not do it, then God did it. So basically in a pitiful way, he, manu he maneuvered the situation to say, this is your will, that's what's happening. But the point of the whole the silly story, and I don't think I'm quite telling it right, uh, is that you end up in a situation where you have to resign and say, this is the way things are because I can make no more changes. And that sounds like a cop out. It sounds like I'm just giving up and you know using some sort of religious garb. Not religious, there's, there's, no, there's no doctrine here. There's nothing. This, but once you understand life that way, you find that you can move on. And that's the closest you're ever going to get to healing. When you say, well, my arthritis is joints and my mother, you know, has her own challenges. When she goes on fruit fast, like I do, they go away. But if she goes back to eating a lot of salt, like Lori here, just make, she'll, she'll have those problems. Those conditions will probably exist forever. Um, and that's the nature of being who, who you are. And when you look at yourself as an incomplete product and you say, well, I've got to one day get to perfection. What you're doing is you're clinging and you're chasing, and you're saying, I've got to get to that, and life will be good when I get to that. It doesn't work that way. Right here, right now, taking control, controlling the things you can control, which are many, most you can get rid of, um, and not realizing that, I think is a greater one. So to answer your question on the detox, I promise I'm always going to come right back and wrap it up. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes, that's true. There's no question that by giving your body a break, whether it's a water fast, a dry fast, which I don't recommend, uh, or a fruit fast, you can do any of those and do really well. You will probably uh, de detox your body really well. I've detoxed recently from uh, uh, varicose veins and a few, you know, a couple things on my legs. That I, and I've noticed I continue to improve. I continue to get more endurance. And sometimes you get up and you say, something's wrong. Like you just get up and you get the aches and you realize your body's getting rid of stuff. You realize skin tags are falling off. Uh, boils go away. They pop up and go away because you're pulling that out of your body. So on the more practical level of detox, oh, you see that all the time and you see it very quickly. That's why a lot of people give up on things. They say, well, I don't feel good. Well, of course, you're not going to feel good. You're getting rid of trash that you ate for 
18, 20 years, 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you go on a week's fruit fast or juice fast or, or just OMAD, you're going to start seeing changes, particularly if you're eating clean on OMAD. Oh, my God. You're eating a fruit-based OMAD every other day. You're eating a raw meal. You're going to lose like nobody's business, and you're going to start getting headaches and breakouts, and most people give up. But that's the way to keep going because you're going to optimize. And every day after that fruit meal, when you have an all raw day, you start to realize you got energy to rival the gods. You're going to eventually adjust all of your gut bacteria. The wrong kind is going to die. The right kind is going to overpopulate. And you're going to have a, a new synergy going about you that's going to optimize. But is that possible without detox? I don't think so. Mm, okay. Okay. Okay, guys, do you have any more questions before we proceed? You're welcome to unmute yourself. Okay, Joe, so let's proceed. So please tell us about other aspects you were thinking about on the spiritual side of uh, the fasting and OMAN. Okay, so we just covered this by way of the question here, the, they're understanding the role of your health problems. They're, they're there to, for the same reason a cliff is in the side of a mountain. So we've covered that. Um, we, we talked about different things, but a lot of times we fail to understand the last point here. When I think we can work toward wrapping up, I do need to be wrapped up by about 1, 105. Just, just okay, so which is uh, uh, because we are different time zones, every one of us. Minutes. How yeah, long 20 more minutes from here, so, yeah. 20 more minutes, okay, yeah. good. Um, so understanding the role of the diamond in the rough. And uh, I think to me, this is one of the most th careful things you can have. Um, and again, our focus today has been spiritual because... That's, that's what we're after here. Uh, we can always talk about physical stuff, uh, which is less important. But uh, understanding the diamond in the rough principle, you are the diamond. The rough is everything around you. Now, that sounds a little self-serving, but let's look at a diamond the way a diamond is created in the earth. Diamond is created when there's many, many layers of rock pressing against a singular point. What that does over time and with heat and with the elements of the earth, that forms an invaluable stone. But it takes all of the deadness around that, all of that worthless earth to compress so that the diamond can be created, which of course takes eons of time. So when you look at your planet, you realize the role that how amazing it is to be alive. If you understand cosmology and planetary science even a little, you understand the role of how amazing it is that you and I are talking here. If there's if that's lost on any of you, you're you're out of the game because. But understanding this is the next level still. So the big problem with uh, missing this point is you don't see your own value. It took all of these dead planets and all of this stardust and all of these comets and all of these asteroids to make one Earth. Think about it just for a moment. That is completely staggering. How long will we have to go in space until we run into another Earth, uh, another system, another ecosystem of life? God only knows. Uh, eventually, we will. We have to. Because again, the inevitability speaks, and that is the divine speaking. Think in terms of the stock, stopped clock. The stopped clock is right twice a day in the same way the divine speaks. And when it speaks, you listen. And that's why we're actually talking here. But when you understand this ratio, you understand why all of the bad things happen in your life. Look at everything you've ever tried to plan. Look at everything you've ever tried to do that didn't work out in your life. All of those things were the rough. The diamond is the thing that you were meant to do, which incidentally, you may not have known, you may not have planned. Everything that you ended up doing tended to fail. You made a list, you said, I've got everything I need from the store and the list, <laughs> despite your best efforts, wasn't complete. You thought of something when you were there that you forgot and you forgot. That's the way all of life is. So when you understand that, you understand the value of the human life. And you understand that everything you do, right or wrong, is part of what is right. So then this helps you to understand the labeling correctly. And the labeling says this, you can put whatever name on something you want, but at the end of the day, you have to understand that good and evil are two sides of the same coin. Fortune and misfortune are two sides of the same coin. I feel like a broken record because I'm repeating this in the other points that I made. Well, that's intentional. Because if you don't understand it from this perspective, you won't understand the fasting. How do I apply that to a daily struggle with, with eating once a day? Very easy. As you choose your meals every day, as you, and I'm, I'm talking to a lot of you who are just beginning one meal a day here for a moment, 
you're going to find that all of these questions pop into your head. Uh, how much sugar should I have? Should that sugar be processed? How big can the plate be? How small can the plate be? Should I do uh, protein only? Do I have iron deficiency? Uh, how will my health problems react? All of these questions coming right up. Absolutely. That's the, that's the rough. The diamond is the fact that you made your decision to do it and you said, I'm not going to eat before 10 a.m. ever. So you say, I'm going to allow myself four hours. I'm going to pick a time within that four hours and I'm going to eat that meal. That's the diamond. Because mm. as you keep going, you will find that you're going to eat too much one day. You're going to eat not enough one day. If you stop with the rough and you pick up every piece of rough, oh, this is not a diamond. <laughs> you're going to give up your quest because you you keep, you ever done looking for diamonds? I did that in the 80s with when I was still young. It was like uh, we would go to Arkansas and, and pick up rocks and it's like, we, we never found anything. <laughs> Why is that such a good message? Because that's the diamond. The, the diamond has to be elusive so that it can be valuable. If yeah. everything is a diamond, it has no value. So when you start making adjustments to your path, stop looking at where, you know, the fact that you didn't lose, you get on the scale, that's another rough. You sit there, oh, I didn't lose any weight today. Uh, or, you know, I feel more bloated. You know, I, I feel constipated. What am I going to do about the constipation? And then you start playing that horrible game where you look for even more rough because you go along thinking mm -hmm. everything you're doing is causing other health problems. Well, maybe it's going to, maybe I got the flu because I was doing OMAD. I get that. I get that nearly every week. I guess somebody says, well, I think I got sick. Did OMAD do this? Why in the heck would you think that oh man has anything to do with that? <laughs> but again, hit, miss, 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 hit. Miss, 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 hit. What are you doing? Every little step is a step forward. That's the final of my nine cardinal principles. Go back and watch my nine cardinal principles on YouTube. For those of you who want all of this put into perspective, nothing has changed, folks. Eight years, I've had no... Nothing has changed. I'm not peddling diet pills, exercise equipment. It's the same story over and over again. Every step is a step forward. The rough, the diamond. And then eventually the diamond starts showing up because you have all those days of no weight loss, all those days of just meager weight loss. And then eventually you get a diamond because you realize you're fitting into your old pants. Uh, you start getting rid of, uh, stop shaking after the meal. Your diabetic symptoms go away and your blood sugars, which at first, if you're on OMAD, start getting really high and then they start coming down. And then you start introducing healthier foods and you notice that that increases uh, even still all of the benefit that you increase. Whereas you looked at it from the start, you could not have imagined the progress you make now. If I went and told old Joe, 2012 and beyond and backwards Joe, hey, you're going to be eating buckwheats instead of beef in the future. You're going to be, be eating a lot of strawberries and raspberries. And you're like, get out of here, because that was too far of a revelation down the road. Uh -huh. Boda was asked, uh, are there aliens and what lies beyond Earth and all of this stuff? And he replied, he says, you cannot know those things, but you shouldn't know. And he scalded his disciples for asking him because he said, you don't, that's another form of clinging. You don't look for all of the knowledge. You don't look for all of the, the answers. And he made a comparison and really not Buddha, but several other of his, of his disciples like Nagarjuna, who said, you can only see around like zigzag. You can see to the end of the next corner, but you can't see. <laughs> so you stop looking for those answers and you stop craving. You stop. And that's everything. It's craving pride. It's craving food. It's craving sweets. It's craving uh, the love of your, you know, your, family member you want love from because you've got some kind of codependency thing going on, all of those things. And you realize that you are that you are the diamond. So you understand that. And when you understand that, you realize that it's a lot easier to fast because now you don't have to, you start to become aware, just like with meditation and being silent, you become more aware of all of the angry moments you have throughout the day, all of the ways that you, you find yourself thinking about food again. And you, you start thinking about telling somebody off and uh, you know, getting even with somebody who wronged you and you become more aware that's the real diamond. It's the fact that, that uh, these levels are opened up to you just like playing a video game and you start to realize when you win the quest, you go to the next level, you know? It's like uh, anything that anybody who grew up playing video games knows, you, you can't get to the uh, first level, second mm -hmm. level until you beat the first and on and on it Absolutely. goes. You get a kid that plays video games all the time, they know all the tricks. <laughs> Uh -huh, uh -huh, in all the levels they know how to but you can't start that way and right. so um that is that's the problem that you those are the things you don't have to be afraid of uh 
So mm. when you understand the diamond and rough principle, I think that you, you make the best progress understanding. So when it comes to fasting and feeling like you want sweets and feeling like you have a headache and you're adjusting and you don't know if you're going to make it, those are roughs. Those are very easy to get past. And you will get past them. Unfortunately, you are where you are at the time. So just like getting disciplined by your parents, you thank them later in life. Thank you for leading me down the right way. Even if you don't say that, you're, you're thankful. If you, you know, maybe mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. if you do, you are definitely thankful. Thank you for whipping my butt for doing certain things. Because, but down the road, you've got it. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Wow, Joe. That's amazing. I know I've gone 100 miles an hour here sometimes, and I've, I've thrown a lot out there, but... Uh, wow, wow. No, that's, uh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Such an inspiration. Lots of things to think about and to kind of to ponder and to think about the, how, how we can take those principles and connect them to our daily activities and daily lives in terms of OMAD and other fields as well. Um, now, Joe, because you have to uh, um, wrap it up soon, let's just cover the uh, questions that we got in the chat. And then um, if you still have some points to cover, then we can just schedule um, another time. Definitely. Definitely. This is good. This is good. All right. Question. How to combine home with Yeah, but, uh, but uh, Joe, but I'm sorry, uh, Ravital uh, uh, unmuted herself, so she probably wants to ask something live, and then we will go to our questions. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, Ravital. I'm sorry. I didn't see you. Go ahead. Hey, hi, Robbie. Uh, it's it's a question I asked. Uh, it's it's a technical question. What do you say about, um, you know, uh, being raw vegan and being mostly on juices instead of OMAD? I mean, why? Because the problem is that you're hungry. So isn't it better to be on something light, but or or, or liquids? And also, what do you consider OMAD? Is that when the rest of the time you can drink just water or other things? I mean, in terms of uh, definitions. You, you asked the question about the fruitarian or liquid lifestyle, why choose all men? Was that your question? Uh, the one with uh, another question or questions, yeah. Is all mad okay. actually intermittent fasting? Yeah, the one with the smiley, I think, that's hers, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have um, the only one with the smiley. Oh, okay, got it. Is it yes? I only have one. Oh, actually, oh man, intermittent fat. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the, the labels. I don't care about labels. So you can call something whatever in the world you want to call it. You can make up a term that's immaterial, except to you, if it if it means something to you. As far as I am concerned, when I conceived of OMAD the way I do it, it was with a minimalist focus on control which was the, and is still really the only thing that is the focus. Uh, if I can maintain self-control, that's the, the idea. That, you, that can be true with liquid and fruits and fruitarian. I've done that for up to more than, I've, I've actually gone 31 days on only fruit in the OMAD format. So it can be done. Uh, if you mean for how long, I don't think that I would want to carry that longer than 30 days. Um, but again, let's, let's clarify the issue. Um, what do you feel is optimal for your body in terms of long-term progress? I'm a, I don't know your goals. So are you looking for weight loss? Are you looking for health? Are you looking health. for anti-aging? Anti <laughs> anti-aging. That ain't going to happen. Okay, let me kill that for you. That, that doesn't work that way. You can stay as optimal eating a plant-based diet as anyone can, and that the rest is your genes. That's so you can kill that right now because you will look and you will find that the results are the same. You will find that people that live uh, long are meat eaters and you will find that people that live long are fruitarians. You'll find about equal relationships and you can know just by looking at your dog. If you decide that you want your dog to live 100 years, it's not going to happen because a dog's DNA says about 13 years, it has that many cell divisions. So if you Let's say you feed it the best diet, science diet, the, the really expensive ones, the, the commercial grade ones that cost like crazy. You're still not going to change that by maybe a year. Um, if that means I, what I want you to do is to not have a delusion that's crippling you. You're, if you take care of yourself, you don't let yourself get overweight, you control yourself with OMAD, any version of it, you'll do much better than somebody who's not doing that. I don't think that you can modify much maybe you could get another five or seven years maybe that's it's worth that to you i would do a high fruit diet like you're doing and use tactically meats and other things but it's up to you 
uh, based on your belief system and your lifestyle. I just don't want to see you put a lot of effort into something that can't deliver. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, I am seeing results. I mean, not as like I would, but yeah, you, you see and you have to uh, work hard. It's not uh, basically detox, basically detox, so more lighter diet. So, you know, oh, mad. So you're saying it could be anything you eat. So isn't it better to eat more? Uh, but healthier things. Sure, or... sure. Yeah, uh, Joe. I just, I just want to clarify. I think what she means is, uh, uh, is it better to eat lighter diet throughout the day, or is it better to concentrate to eat pretty much whatever you want, just one meal a day, right, Rovital? That's how, that's how yeah, I got your question, right? Yeah, it is intermittent fasting or a lighter diet, uh, raw vegan diet, or intermittent oh. fasting like a window, uh, a short window of eating, yeah. Um, yes. So, so she's asking what's better, basically. What, what's Not better you. in your opinion? Right now, I see, I didn't see where we're dividing it here with verbal versus written, so I didn't get to read all of the part of it here. So um, let, uh, now I, I understand what you were asking. Uh, okay, so the answer is um, it, it, the problem with eating all day of any type is uh, you're gonna you're going to have if it's fruit only you're fine, uh, but I don't see that as sustainable in terms of eating all day. If you find that that optimizes you, then by all means do that. As far as eating in one spot, the most the problem most people have is insulin. That's going to get more insulin in the system, which is usually responsible for weight gain and all the problems that come with it. Uh, if you're just eating raw fruits, untouched fruits, insulin is not going to be an issue because you're bypassing that. So if you eat strawberries, you're not going to have any insulin in your system. You're just going to get thinner, but you can't do that forever. So that's why I say it's really tough. You need to make a decision on what you think is best for you. Um, I don't think that there is really a way. I think you need to look at your goals. And because the body is what it is, your goals may change in the next 10 years. You may say, I want more collagen. I may need more collagen. You may say, I need more weight. I'm getting too thin. I'm losing too much. It just, it, I can't tell for sure. And of course, you may have something pop up, a degenerative weakness, something that is in your genetic code that you couldn't prevent. Uh, all of these things are a reality and you cannot go around with the expectation that anything in particular is going to happen. So to answer your question, uh, if you are at a healthy weight and you are right now in an optimal point in your life, by all means, eat. If you're not struggling with weight, you're not struggling with health complications, you're not having issues with your teeth or your bones, keep going. You don't need all that. If that's the case, yeah, you don't need any of this. You know, trying to... Yeah, in terms of health in the long run, yeah, and you have to make that decision because not everybody's body is the same. Uh, I know that I'm not going to quit doing all that, but, uh, and that's a decision I've made. But I notice as well, when I eat cleaner, I feel better, I'm healthier, I'm more active, I have more endurance. So again, it's an assessment question. It's also a struggle because uh, you have to enjoy it if, if you can't uh, maintain it because, uh, I mean, you're, you're too strict with yourself and you're, and you're starving yourself. So it's a problem. I mean, you, you're hungry, you want to eat. So what I recommend you do um, is set up a routine with the sole goal being, I'm going to maximize this for the rest of my life. It will provide enough calories, enough fun, and then start dividing and do what's in the middle. And when you say, I have enough fun, I enjoy the good foods I like, I also enjoy the, you know, the healthier foods, you try to combine all of that into a routine that is yours. Uh, you're not in a position, a lot of people that come to OMAD are broken because they have a horror, they've had a horrible diet for years. They're, they're very obese. They are, they have all sorts of problems they're trying to beat. So they've got 10 things to do. And I say, start with one and do that uh, because it makes it easier, but you, you don't have that problem. Yeah. So all you need to do is start creating a long game strategy. And it may take you another year of experimentation to find out what works. I know what I do. I do uh, an optimal, suboptimal, and then when I get to the end of the week, I splurge with whatever. Uh, and all throughout the week, I love the fact that my kitchen is cleaner. I don't have a bunch of greasy foods around. I don't have a bunch of meats around. I only have turkey and uh, usually just turkey and, and some fish. It's the only thing I even have in my house. I don't even have any uh, 
I used to have hamburgers and burritos. <laughs> I used to have all kinds of terrible food, but that works for me. Uh, so it's, all, it's all relative, you're saying. You know, all well, relative. And you have to make that decision in terms of the way you, you look great to me. Uh, I think you you take care of yourself. You're not, you're going to do as good as your genetic hand will allow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to do what you have to do to optimize your game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, cool. Cool. Yes, Ravi. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that you unmuted yourself. Yeah. Please do. Very much. Uh, Joe, thank you very much. Yes, definitely. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Ravital. <laughs> yes, Joe, Ravi. I'm also, hi, Joe. I'm also from Houston. Nice to meet you here. Hey, how's it going? Good, good, good. Joe, I have a couple of quick questions. One is, uh, you know, I am hearing about the, the fruit diet, right? So people say that fruits, if you keep eating a lot of fruits, that can be, uh, you know, high uh, blood glucose you know, in the blood and... Uh, I don't know what your experience around that. And no. second question is, what do you what do you what is your ideal diet in a day? Your ideal diet. Um, the second, uh, okay. First, sorry, we get the first question. Okay, so as far does fruit raise blood glucose? Unquestionably, uh, but the issue is, is your body absorbing it? So I don't know if you have any hereditary diabetes or or you're thinking of someone else. But when you uh, eat fruit, the problem it goes directly into the cell. It does not need insulin. Unlike a candy bar and unlike any other food that has to be broken down and insulin has to extract the glucose. To it. it doesn't do that with fruit. Uh, the problem people have with fruit is that they already have polluted cells and the cells don't receive the glucose. So their blood sugar just gets higher. Uh, ordinary, yes, it will raise, but it will be absorbed into the blood sugar, into the, the cells throughout your body within 30 minutes. That's Yes, that's oh, if it works. If you're diabetic, it will resist you and it, your blood sugar will get higher for a while. But you'll notice if you quit eating bad things, if you quit eating fats with the sugar, it get, gets absorbed into after about a month, it'll start getting absorbed quickly into the cell. And that's what I tell people. I and my own girlfriend was diabetic and uh, had the same thing happen a month. It took her a month to be able to start absorbing sugar because she was, you know, Hispanic heritage and a lot of them are diabetic and she uh solved the problem and by doing that but it took a month more than a month finally she was back down to normal blood glucose levels and she continued to optimize eating once a day eating a fruit meal once a day and then sometimes she would if she did have meat she would never have it with fruit so if she had some fatty meat she would only have that fatty that that day um so that's the first question does it cause a fatty liver no does it cause um, liver? No, it's not going to. Triglycerides only at first because the body cannot receive them. Then it will eventually come down and start optimizing. And that's the, one of the reasons if you're, if you're eating a feeding window or one meal a day with fruit, you'll find that it takes quicker. It'll, your body will get into it quicker. If you're eating fruit all day, it'll take longer. So because you're, But your body will clean faster. So there's an advantage of uh, people who eat all day on fruit. I get that. I mean, it works. Uh, I build muscle like that. I have great workouts on just fruit, just watermelon and grapes. I have a great workout and chia seeds. Throw some chia seeds in there and mix them up. Uh, what was your second question? What, is, what do you eat in a day? What do you, you are your personal diet? Yes. Okay. Um, well, any given day would be different, but I'll tell you my favorite. Uh, pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, uh, flax seeds. Uh, a buckwheat, uh, buckwheat groats, the little, the, the, the seeds, mm -hmm. uh, of course, rice, uh, a few legumes, black beans, uh, uh, and pinto beans, uh, red lentil pasta. If I'm going to have that, it's just made from reconstituted red lentils. Uh, and then of course, grapes, watermelon, um, um, pineapple, orange, uh, all sorts of uh, cherries. I love cherries. Uh, all sorts of things. I have a, a basically most fruits. I could read uh, broccoli. I do steamed broccoli and stir fry. I do cauliflower. I do cabbage uh, on any given day. And I might make my my meals tend to be simpler. So if I have a juice, it's watermelon and grapes and berries in mixture. I just put them in there. Uh, another day I'll have just orange juice. I'll have some pineapple in there, maybe some strawberries for flavor and cherries. And then I'll have a, a few bananas and apples. And then for the, if I do eat if I do mix any cooked food with it, I'll do uh, right. I might just do rice or I might just do uh, 
uh, basil seeds cooked with mushrooms on broccoli, something green. Uh, the next day I might have eggs and bacon. Uh, the next day I might, I'm back to raw. I'll usually have, I usually never have too many days back to back of meats. I don't, I just don't do it. Um, turkey, I love turkey. I love sardines in the cans with the oil. I, I think that's the only time I get oil. Uh, the rest of that though, I'll go several days and just have rice and uh, uh, fruits. I eat the fruit first and then finish off with a bowl of rice, maybe with some broccoli or greens in there of some sort, cauliflower or something like that. And I'll, uh, I don't even add salt. I just eat it. So I listened to one of your YouTube videos where you talked about apple cider vinegar, right? Yes. If you're if you're drinking processed juice and you're you you want to get started and give yourself some acidity, I recommend it. You wouldn't need it. You don't do that with real fruits, so, and you don't need it for if you're going to eat healthy. So because it's apple cider vinegar, it's not a, not a yeah, you, you don't need no. Yeah, it's only that was how I started. Be and it's good if, if a person wants to eat a standard American diet. You need more acidity because oh, you, it'll be harder to digest your food. If you're eating a hamburger and French fries, it's very hard. Yeah, yeah it's very hard to do that uh, because you eat a steak and potatoes. It's good to have apple cider vinegar to break it down because your stomach needs natural acidity. When you eat fruit, the the liquid is absorbed into your tissues, and you're going to get a much better benefit and be hydrated without needing to break stuff down. Awesome, thank you, sir, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely, so, yeah. Joe, so uh, I know that you really have to go. Uh, so let, let's just cover very, very fast a few more questions, just one or two sentences. So question one, sure. how to combine OMAD with daily dry fast? Thank you, love from Belgium. Uh, yes, uh, well, if you're gonna dry fast, yeah, I would just make sure that as you, you, you get enough fluid concentration at your meal to because your kidneys need fluid and that's the danger of dry fasting. If you wanna go completely 23 hours until the next meal again, I think that's doable. Uh, I would make sure that when you do eat the meal, you're eating foods that have hydration in them so that you're able to, I've, I've had, there have been some horror stories with that. So as long as you're getting uh, sufficient uh, hydration at the meal, which is, you really can't do eating a whole lot of fat, fatty products and stuff like that. I would watch that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Next one. Um, okay, I, I skipped few questions that we have already covered. Uh, so uh, the next one, how, how to maintain weight at OMAD if I want to go OMAD suddenly? Uh, I would, uh, well, if it's really that important. So the goal is to maintain weight. Yeah, for someone who is very thin, for example, then or for, for I, someone who might get thin. So how would yeah, you well, go about that? You don't need, that's usually not going to be an issue because you're not going to lose weight that fast. So if you just eat more and you have a, a, a higher solid food content, you're going to probably gain weight. If you have a fast metabolism, you need to question, first of all, why you want to do OMAD like that, unless it's just for spiritual reasons. Uh, you're not going to lose that much weight that fast if you're getting enough calories. So I would just say up your calorie. Make sure you're getting a lot of stuff that are pro, you know, if you do, if you're okay with animal products, then have the animal products and, um, you know, understand that, uh, that you would, you would have a responsibility, especially if you're active, you know, you're going to have an even harder time. So um, it may be easier for some people if you're really underweight and you don't want to optimize anymore, go with two meals a day. You can still meditate and fast and, and do other things. It's always going to be better, uh, OMED for meditation and all of that. But I would, I would track calories and make sure you get, you know, get extra. So mm, good, good. Thank you so much. Next one, how to deal with hunger the rest of the time. So probably they mean just throughout the fasting time, how to deal with hunger. Watch this lecture. <laughs> <laughs> Go back through all the stuff we covered. If you're looking for a way to get rid of hunger, you're looking for a way to control a temporary problem. The hunger's temporary. It's going to go away. It's like being a child and seeing your mom walk off at daycare and you cried, mama, don't leave because you didn't know that mama's coming back. So it's the same thing with your hunger. You realize that that's a temporary thing. Mama's going to come back. You're going to be in control <laughs> and it be hunger forever. So you're satiating that you enjoy eating multiple meals of. That is a temporary thing. Why would you put that much energy on a way to try to optimize? If you want to use some artificial sweeteners and some coffee, diet sodas throughout the day that don't have calories, and you'll make it through the fast. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the only tip I have to give you, except to think spiritually and watch, mm -hmm. take to practice what we're covering here. Great, great. Next question, we kind of covered some aspects of it, but maybe you have something to add. The question is, 
if you follow a fruitarian, fruitarian or liquidarian lifestyle, then why to choose OMAD? Whenever the body gives the true, true signals, we drink, we drink. Why OMAD? Even skipping some days or twice on some, uh, on some days, why to go unnatural against natural signals of the body by setting OMAD mindset? Do animals in nature form such patterns? Don't they follow natural signals that their body gives? So that's oh, absolutely. This is a perfect question. This is my favorite question today. And I, uh, it, it's, it is, it is, yeah, of course. Well, then if, if you don't need OMAD, don't do it. It sounds like you, if you can, if you have a routine that you think is superior, far be it for me to convince you to do it. Uh, as far as animals in nature, they're not made in the image of the divine you are. So it will never be as simple as you. The same way you and I can sit here and talk about the evidence for and against God, all of the animals will never do that. There's a hundred thousand things that you do every day from balancing a statement, a checkbook and do it, you know, paying for college. If you have kids, all of the things that you do that are put you on a different dimension than an animal. As far as in an ideal world, yes, everything you say is true. You should be able to go out there and eat when you're hungry and eat healthy foods. It should never raise your cholesterol. It should, sure, uh, we can, we can, we can uh, talk about the good times. Yeah, it was like that when you were a child, but what did you do? You developed bad habits. You started eating when you were stressed, eating when you're bored, eating when you're uh, to take back the power, all the negative things, eating to celebrate. And what did you do? You developed, now you got to go back and correct. If you don't need that, far be it from me to tell you how to do that. You've got it in control, it sounds like. Uh, as far as uh, adopting and changing a diet, you also have a practical consideration. Are you able to do that? Are you able to work and live on a fully raw diet? Uh, I, I'm, I got no problem with somebody making that work for them. I've said, everybody, you can go carnivore if that if you can make it work for you. To me, those are extremes that you don't need to go to. It's just like the, the plant-based eaters tell the vegans, they say, you don't need to go that far. You can get the benefit by just eating 75% of the time right. And then what you're eating that's wrong or, you know, bad food, you can minimize. That's the wisdom in all of this. So the answer is what fits you and what doesn't. Uh, in a perfect world, yes, we'd be sitting there just ah, eating in a, you know, are we going to cover our houses? You know, did you know that if you paint your house white, you'll stop global warming? If we all painted our roofs white, you'd solve the problem overnight if you could do that, but you can't do that because it's, it's, there's a lot of cost behind it. There's, what are you going to do? Live in a radiation bubble? Are you going to build nine feet of water around you? To, sure, in a perfect world, you could do that. You could go to, uh, um, New Guinea and start a garden with the most fresh soil. What are you going to do? You can't do that. So what are you going to do? You're going to stay where you are and you're going to make the most wise choice. And when you do that, you're going to understand just like our, our mythology parable, such as the will of God. So you go from there. <laughs> Amazing. Hey, Joe, do you still have time for a few questions or you're going to have to go? I'm going to have to cap it for today. Uh, okay. Let's save the rest of those and let's do a follow up. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, Joe. So, uh, yeah. And uh, it's okay, Joe. So thank you so much for coming. We, I, I hope we can learn. We have learned a lot from your wisdom. And uh, we're going to, put, uh, and guys, I'm going to put some links uh, below this video, uh, contact details of Joe, his website, his uh, YouTube channel. So just go and learn. JoeHolmanOnline.com, new site coming soon. Uh, I've got, uh, I'm redoing the site, but uh, if you guys want to reach out, JoeHolmanOnline.com, there's a contact form there. Yeah, uh, Joe, I, I, are you provo are you providing counseling during this period of time or you yes. are? Yeah? Yes, I am. I will provide counseling. Uh, just mention the, the uh, webcast here and uh, I will hook you up, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, Joe, so have a great day and thank you so, so much. We'll see each other later. Thank you so you much.